gonna do that. We did that. Was it doing that because we were so dumb? No, because I slowed it down. Oh, okay. Of course it was. The announcement played right after we discovered his body. Maybe, but that was also the same time that Topper's body was found. That's right. It wasn't long after finding his body that we heard the announcement. So there's a good chance we've made a mistake in there somewhere. I think we've confused whether the announcement was for Hifumi or Taka. First of all, if two bodies had been found, there really should have been two announcements. There was. Maybe Monokuma simply got lazy and rolled them together into one. What do you say, Monokuma? Any comment? There was two. Well, it's a very sensitive issue, so I can't go, can't into, go into too, too much, much detail. detail. But what I can say what about I can the body say. discovery announcement is that... It's only broadcast when three or more people find a dead body for the first time. That didn't answer our question, man. We're asking if you're a lazy bum. <laughs> no, actually, that was plenty. <laughs> huh? He said it's only broadcast when a body is discovered for the first time, which means even if we find the same body again later, he won't make the announcement again. If that's true, then why was the announcement made again later on? Huh? Later on? Exactly. We heard the body discovery announcement twice. And body discovery announcement. The first time it played was when we found each body in the nurse's office in the equipment room. And the second time was when... Both bodies were rediscovered. Just after Hifumi came back to life. Uh, no, it was when they were rediscovered. Yeah. Yeah. My God. I was thinking about how he died again, and then... We rediscovered the two I was looking at the walkthrough. <laughs> 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 because we're dumb. <laughs> As a collective. I was hoping to steer us in the right direction. Or something. The body has been discovered. A body has been discovered. Oh. <laughs> After a certain amount of time, which you may use however you like, the class trial will begin. It didn't seem sexy weird as hell. At the time, but it contradicts and what Mark Kuma just told us, doesn't it? Exactly. If we were actually rediscovering both bodies, the announcement shouldn't have played. And in reality, when the two dead bodies were rediscovered, one of them was actually being discovered for the first time. So when we found Hifumi the first time in the nurse's office, did we all collectively forget that yet. he came back to life to talk Meaning to Mina? Or he wasn't actually found dead until we came collectively? Upon him in the repository. Yeah, it's been expunged it. from our memory. There's one other thing that leads me to believe he was still alive in the nurse's office. Oh, oh, oh I know, I know! Because he was super good at playing dead! Bada bing, bada boom! That is the worst logic I have ever heard. But honestly, I do not think there's anything that can prove he was still alive. Okay then, let's take another look at the events surrounding the discovery of his body. Then it should become clear whether he was really alive or not. This whole thing is pointless. Let me prove that shows if Fumi was still alive. I have to find it and show it to everyone. Okay. Yeah, so Hifumi's glasses were wiped off, which means that he wiped them off. And the only person who would wipe them off is him because he couldn't see. Right. Yes. And then, while me and Celeste were in the bathroom, his body disappeared. And Correct. The time we saw his body, it was in the repository. Sure was. Uh huh. Compare his body before being moved and his body after being yes. moved. Other than the change in how it was positioned. What? Nope, not that one. No. Shoot. God damn it. It's um 
It was no noticeable difference. Hmm. Which must come later then. No, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to do that. Oh, fuck. At least okay. didn't hit anything, so we're fine. And the next time we saw his body, it was in the repository. But when you compare his body before being moved and his body after being moved, other than the change in how it was positioned, there was no notable difference. There we go. No, oh, that's wrong. It is wrong. In fact, there was one clear difference between Hufumi and the nurse's office and the repository. His glasses. <gasps> that fact alone proves that he was only not his glasses. Like to feel he can't see without his glasses. Yeah. <laughs> when we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But when we found him again later in the repository, they were spotless. And I found the item he used to wipe them clean in the nurse's office trash can. The evidence I found in the trash can in the nurse's office was... Handkerchief. Okay, so he wasn't uh, dead, but he, it was he up did there. die. Oh, was it? Yeah, it's the... Oh, yeah, duh. Glasses cleaning cloth. I got it! It was a glasses cleaning cloth featuring a certain cartoon mascot. One look at the blood stain on the cloth should make things clear. This piece of cloth was used to wipe Kikumi's glasses clean. And the mascot on the cloth is the same one that's on the digital camera, right? And whose digital camera was it? Kikumi's, of course. The character was... Princess Piggle. Some demon angel pretty pudgy princess, I think. I you remembered show. all of that? Oh, shit. I'm like, okay, closeted fan. <laughs> I see your point. No one's ever asked. I wouldn't be caught dead using a tacky piece of garbage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is all I need to keep my glasses clean. Then there's no question. It belonged to Hifumi. Mm. Mm. So what you're saying is... What exactly? What I'm saying is, the blood on his glasses was wiped away using his own glasses cleaning cloth. Even if that is true, it does not mean he wiped the blood off himself. But who would benefit from a clean pair of glasses other than the glasses owner? That's a good point. Then it must have been him, right? So let's assume that Hifumi was still alive in the nurse's office. He pretends to be dead. Then when he's alone, he wipes his glasses clean so he can see. Then he stands up and walks out on his own two feet. And with that, the impossible task of moving his copious corpse <laughs> becomes possible, wouldn't you say? But then, if he was just pretending to be dead, what was with all that blood? Was it paint or something? The fridge in the nurse's office contains packs of blood <gasps> for emergencies. Oh, the fridge did those. matter. He figured if he was gonna play dead, he should go. Oh. So he just dumped it everywhere. But he got crazy with it and had to wipe his glasses off when he was done. God, what an idiot. <laughs> Fumi was still alive at that point. The disappearance of Taka's body is easily explained. It should be perfectly obvious who must have moved Taka's body. Fumi. Hey. Fumi? Oh yep. Yep. It could only have been Hifumi. While we were all gathered in the nurse's office, he went to the equipment room and took Taka's body. That also explains how the door to the repository got locked. The door was locked? Well, after the bodies disappeared, we all went looking for them, right? So me and Sakura headed for the repository. But when we got there, the door was locked. And the repository door can only be locked from the inside, which means when Hina and Sakura got to the repository, someone was already inside. And it could only have been Hifumi, who just finished stashing Taka's body there. He convinced us all he was dead, and when he saw his chance, he dragged Taka's body to the repository. So, Hifumi wasn't just another victim in this case. He was one of the assailants. But <gasps> that means he took part in the murders. Mm-hmm, and who does he simp for? And who oh. does he simp for? <laughs> oh, I even figured it out. There's 
I mean, I don't I mean, I, I got that, but I don't get why, but I got it. You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The item he took off of Taka's... What if Makoto was like, uh, no? You wouldn't tell me! The paper! The paper. Papey. In his pants! Yeah, the pants. Which, which one? No, the Fumi. No. The no Fumi head. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the no Fumi head. He's got it. He away, aren't you? In his pants. That's right. We found it stuffed in his pants. What? <laughs> in his pants? <laughs> I know you're jealous, but <laughs> yes, his pants. Mm, yes, his pants. Not like they were his socks or anything. Yeah, that's right. I could never forget about his pants. <laughs> found a hole maybe we can use to escape. Monofuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. That's the note I was telling you about. The one that told me where to go. Huh? Wait. We know, Hero Sweet Baby. We know. My note it said, Little himbo. Can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. See, then this note isn't the same one Hero got. It's not the same? In other words... The killer got in touch with another person besides Hira, and that Taka. If only have been. If pants. Absolutely. Right. We're all trying to get in touch with that. That's right. Taka and murder him. Hello, over here. Objection! Objection! I don't really understand what's going on, but Kifumi had that letter, right? So whoever wrote it wasn't drawing out TikTok. TikTok. Drawing out <laughs> um, just to be clear. Right. Hey, 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 I'm just a little guy. <laughs> Smell poof, day. Eh? Man, Genocide Jack is seriously scary, but still, I can't let her get to me. Oh, good God. Oh, we're getting there. Just, just tell me what I have to do in the walkthrough. I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> um, You're going to shoot... Nothing to do with TikTok with your broken wrist, wrist, broken wrist watch. Holy shit. But remember what the note said. What time did it say to me? 6 a.m. I believe. 6 a.m. So probably this one, I would assume. <laughs> yep. No, that's Nothing to do with TikTok. 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 No, there absolutely is a connection. What? what the hell are you talking about? The notes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Which is the same time Taka was murdered. We've already proven that using his wrist. What? Rate. But there's more. Look where we the have. notes has to meet. The equipment room, right? Which is where Taka was killed. I see. So, Taka was murdered at both the time and place written in the note. I think that should be plenty to show that this note was definitely meant for Taka. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that. No further objections! <laughs> then someone used that note to trick Taka. Just the same as me. <sighs> the culprit really is a cold blooded monster. Telling people they found a way out. But if they gave the note to Taka. I mean, they weren't lying. Stuffed down his pants, no less. And then find a way out. Kifumi stole it off the map. Damn. After he died. Huh? He stole it? Where's your proof? Go ahead. Show us. Show us your moves. <laughs> show us your feet. Go, Go on, on, best friend. Taka scrap show them your man. moves. Yeah, Taka scrap. Oh yeah, get it, I guess. I saw that his lifeless hand was gripping a small scrap of paper. If I'm right about this, the sheet of paper this piece lifeless hand. Grab the lifeless ham. Lifeless ham. That's what they call me. Then Taka's scrap and Kifumi's note. Yup, they're from the same piece of paper. Yes. The note meant for Taka. While Taka's corpse still grasped a small piece of that note, there's only one way to explain it. Taka died clutching the note. Ifumi tried to free the note from his death grip, leaving his <laughs> death grip. Small death grip. <laughs> Did I get death all grip. that right? 
that means Hifumi knew Taka did have a gorilla grip coochie. That's just... <laughs> Oh shit. Oh my God. Hey, yeah. hey Ethan. <laughs> yes. Mute yourself. Okay. <laughs> I can only imagine it even shaking his own hand. <laughs> oh my god. In fact, he was behind the whole thing. In fact, he's still alive. Sorry. No. As much as I would love to watch Afumi suffer. The second body discovery announcement proves that. <gasps> so then, who killed Hifumi? Whoever did is the mastermind. The true killer. Not not the who mastermind. The, the mastermind of this particular movie. So he must have been killed not long after transporting Taka's body. So he must have been killed after Taka's body vanished. But before we found both bodies in the repository. During that time, we'd all split up and were searching for Taka's missing body. In other words, during that time, none of us have alibis. Wait, but me and Sakura were together. Stop trying to steal the spotlight, you stupid walrus! Whoa! No! no. I'm a walrus. I am mute. When they were killed bothers me too. Yeah, you can There's unmute. Okay, cool. Even more. <laughs> And what might that be? The weapon they used to kill Hifumi. The weapon? Yeah. Cause I mean, according to the Me too, Sakura. The, the weapon. The she is talking to a himbo. <laughs> She's but gotta Justice be. Hammer three and four were She's still sure he knows what he's talking about. An equipment room, right? So if right. Hifumi was killed in the repository, hmm. the culprit would have had to grab one of the hammers Kill oh yeah, one of them was squeaky clean. <gasps> yeah. Risky for him? I'm surprised. Did you just it seems there's some semblance yes. of a brain knocking around that skull of yours after all? Wow. Hell yeah. It's good for him. In there good, and <laughs> good and tight. He's right though. I don't understand it either. The Monokuma file makes it clear that they were killed using similar instruments. But if the hammers were already laying around those other rooms... So the question is, how could the culprit have gotten their hands on either of the hammers? Personally, I haven't a clue. So which hammer was used to attack Celeste? Number one or number two? Those were accounted for in other rooms too. And I don't think either mm. one is big enough to kill someone. Um, we can clean hammer, a squeaky clean hammer. Is it not possible they used a different weapon? I don't think it is possible. They were both killed with the same kind of thing, right? So then, what was used to kill Hifumi? The weapon that was actually used to kill Hifumi. The whole picture surrounding this case wouldn't become clear until we figured that out. Somehow, I, I have to find the truth. Okay. You're going to shoot one of the justice hammers with spotless hammer. Sick. <laughs> We've just given up. Yeah, no, we knew it's because we knew that. We we're assuming that that's what they're gonna say. Yeah, I just um Justice Hammer four. Well, whatever it was, there's one thing we have to figure out. How was the culprit able to move around so freely with the weapon? How did nobody witness them carry? So it was small. <laughs> no, it was not. Uh. Check out murdergear.com slash hammer time for more info. Hell yeah. What? Hold on. Wait. Wait, wait. Ethan, someone. Murdergear.com slash hammer time. Slash. Wait, I spelled it wrong. Damn it. Wait, no. Okay. Murdergear.com slash hammer time. Justice hammer at all. No. It was something completely different. But seriously, a different weapon? Oh, well, I, I went somewhere. <laughs> Specifically, it brought me to murdergear.bigcartel.com. <laughs> oh, sorry, what? <laughs> Ethan, get oh? off there. They're going to put you on a list. <laughs> it's just some zombie. Cool. They're going to put you on a list. Ethan, buy me some heroin. I wish. <laughs> That's actually the portal to the dark web. Hell yeah. <laughs> Your Toro Toro browser? Tori? What is it called? Clean was most likely because it was used to commit murder. 
I'm a Taurus. <laughs> hey, me too. Leo. I'm not Bento actually box. a Taurus. Well, you have two Tauruses and five beans. Hell one yeah. Scorpio, one Sagittarius, and one Leo. Guess which is which. <laughs> it's not hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah, As someone you know, who knows nothing about it, I'm you know, just too sure. Sure. I feel like you could switch you and Madeline, though, based solely on the playthrough. That's true. And like I, ha I'm, I was born on a cusp too, so it's like. Really. So Hifumi moved Taka's body to the repository, where someone then used a hammer to kill him. The hammer did that is the true killer, the one Hifumi was working with, and the one who betrayed him. Hold on a moment. I still think it's strange to assume someone was- You would say that, blah, wouldn't blah, you, blah. Celeste? The way the graduation rule works, mm. there's no benefit to helping someone else carry out a murder. Plus, so they the sim- that anyone would work together like that is simply ludicrous. We talked about this, did we not? We did talk about how there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to work together. At least that's what we thought at first, but- Okay, so you're gonna absorb two murders. Okay. Based on the rules that have been laid out for us, even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply impossible that two people work together on this. That is how the rule was explained to us. No, I didn't mean to do that. one murder, right? In this case, however, there were two murders. Okay. Okay. And then you'll wait for it to finish, and then when this starts over, you're gonna shoot impossible. Okay. Even if more than one person is complicit in the murder, only the one who actually carried out the act can graduate and survive. Assuming the rule holds true, it is simply no, it's wrong. Um, actually, <laughs> um, actually, since there were two murders, it's at least plausible that more than one person was involved. What do you mean? If there'd only been one murder, then yes, the idea of an accomplice isn't really worth considering. Naturally. If only one person can be saved per murder, an accomplice has no risk versus reward benefit. Risk versus reward benefit? The payoff for working together. What are you asking? You literally just made that apparent, Makoto. Yeah. There's no point in being someone's accomplice if there's no benefit to- Pretty you. lady, say big word. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if there were some potential mutual reward for the risk, then cooperation becomes possible. You're saying that two people could act as each other's accomplices to commit two separate murders. I think that's what the true killer told Hifumi. They would each have an accomplice for their crime, and based on the case's events, Hifumi would have been the first one to act, murdering Taka. Mm. They made him carry out the first murder so he couldn't back out of helping them later on. So in this case, there wasn't one single person committing multiple murders. Instead, each person killed someone, creating two separate. How do the rules work then? Yeah. Like one person, because that's how the true killer designed mm. it to look. A single suspicious individual, a similar weapon used in each crime, disappearing bodies. By creating one seamless set of circumstances, they made it look like one person was behind it all. The mastermind picked their target and managed to convince him to go along with their plan. And then, to avoid the no accomplices rule, they simply killed their accomplice. Which, if true, means that betraying Hifumi was part of a plan from the very beginning. That's just awful! How could anyone be so cruel? You think so? I can't help but admire its cunning. Still, their choice of accomplice seems... odd. The effort made to convince us the two murders were the same. That was the main characteristic this time. Kyoko must have noticed that fact from the very beginning, which is why she said not to look at this as a series of connected events, but entirely separate incidents. Kyoko really is amazing. Although, when you think about it, she's almost too amazing. 
like it's almost unnatural how good she is at all this. The true killer manipulated Hifumi to carry out a number of actions, and in the end, murdered him. In the debates up until now, the way the case has unfolded, when you consider all that, sorry, when you consider all that, there really is only one person who seems to fit. Yep. Hmm. Hmm. Who could it be? Is it Frigile? It was Celeste. That's Italian. So I'm the suspicious individual now, am I? <laughs> I really do hate this kind of joke. <clears throat> A joke? I wonder. So what you are saying then is that I specifically chose to work together with Hifumi. The idea that I would choose to spend any amount of time interacting with him, that I would go within ten feet of that shit for brain fat <gasps> worthless goddamn idiot! <gasps> uh, just to be clear, there she did not have an accent when she was yelling. Yep. There you go. Is that so? It is. Throughout the investigation, there was certain behavior that was common only to the two of you. Considering what we've learned so far, it only further proves that the two of you were working together. What is it that only Hifumi and Celeste had in common? Screaming. Encountering mm -hmm. the suspicious. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Or encountering, yeah. Encountering the suspicious. I was just laughing about the scream. They just did also. <laughs> they did also both scream weirdly. Yeah. Which is the first thing I saw, and I was like, <clears throat> oh yeah, they did do that. The only ones who ever actually saw Robo Justice firsthand were Celeste and Hifu. Shush. The adults are talking. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. What? <laughs> no, don't. And Hifumi the adults are talking. The costumed individual. If we accept that Hifumi was one of the culprits, we can't help but suspect what Celeste has said as well. Are you saying everything they told us was a lie? After taking Hifumi to the nurse's office, we all began our search for this individual, correct? And not too long after that, do you remember what Celeste said? I saw a shadow! Something moving at the top of the stairs! We headed to the second floor specifically because of what she claimed to have seen. Next, to draw us all to the physics lab up on the third floor, she let out a blood-curdling scream. And when we'd all come to see what was wrong, what was it she said? Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him! This strange costumed man! He's, he ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs so he headed further into the hallway and disappeared. Once she'd done her job of getting us all up to the physics lab, it was time for her partner to get to work. <laughs> yeah! Huh? Well, what was that? That came from downstairs, it must have been. Hifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. How many of the, how many? Yeah, we, that was like the third time we had to read that. Different. Yep. So that we would discover both bodies at the same time? In fact, Celeste was precisely the one who proposed that we split up. Then why don't we split into two groups? I'll lead the hunting party. That seems much more interesting. Very well. Then Makoto and Hina, you come with me to the nurse's office. I, I will leave the capture of the suspicious individual to Toko, Bisexual, and Sakura. Well... If Celeste and Hifumi were working together, all those chance events suddenly become connected. And on top of that, that piercing cry of yours early on. 
Wow, that was an interesting that was scream. The signal he <laughs> it was your way of telling him we are on the third floor. Everything's going according to plan. Why else would you let out a scream that could have carried across the sea? I just realized another strange thing. When we found Hifumi in the nurse's office, who we now know was only pretending to be dead. I was certainly not expecting this. I did not imagine that Hifumi would be murdered. Celeste. You were the first one to say he'd been murdered. You wanted to make sure we wouldn't have any doubt in our minds. I... I don't believe it. Everything... The whole thing was one big act. Kina, you were with Celeste when Hifumi's body disappeared, right? Yeah. I was feeling kind of sick, so Celeste took me to the bathroom. Wait! Then that was... She wasn't worried about you. She just saw a chance to help Hifumi sneak out of the nurse's office. Each piece isn't much by itself, but start putting them together and the picture gets very ugly indeed. Wouldn't you agree, Celeste? <gasps> I have no idea what you mean. Don't bother trying he, to He looks to the you center to speak to the person day. right next to him. Oh, that is one of the funniest parts of this game. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that right, Celeste? <laughs> Across the room from me. Say that that one little slip up was your undoing. What are you talking about? I'm talking about what you said after Hifumi's body disappeared and we returned to the nurse's office. They must really be enjoying this. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. We're all going to die here. We're going to die just like those guys died. Oh I shit. Her saying that too, but I don't understand what's so strange about it. Mm. Pay attention. Oh. Yeah. And I were first to discover Taka's body in the equipment room. Then Makoto showed up and told us Hifumi had been killed. So Sakura and I left with Makoto. Once we were in the hall, we ran into Celeste, and the four of us headed to the nurse's office. Now, the entire time we were together, Bob, when it's turning, you can see that they're one-dimensional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Celeste's comment doesn't make sense. It was completely out of place. Love a 2D character. Although I don't really get what it means. That's okay, sweetheart. Everyone's having some trouble understanding. Could you repeat what you said? If you're really not the culprit, you shouldn't have any problem repeating it, right? Bisexual said Celeste's comment doesn't make sense, but what is he alluding to? Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna absorb so strange and shoot those guys. We're really gonna shoot those guys? <laughs> yeah. shoot those guys. They must really be in Sorry, absorb what? So strange. The sight of us standing around Probably not gonna come confused. until after she's done with her. Oh, she's acting. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those guys died. And that is all I said. And that's all it takes to finish this. It's obvious, isn't it? What was so strange about Celeste's comment? When she said that she should only have known about Hifumi's death. With that in mind, what's so strange about what she said is... And I shoot those guys, right? Mm -hmm. Shoot those guys. Yep. Enjoying the sight of us standing around, frightened and confused. Frightened. They must be positively elated. We are all going to die here. We are going to die. Just like those. Well, you're definitely going to die here. That's right. There's no reason Celeste should have said, just like those guys die. When she said that, none of us had told her Taka was dead. Exactly. 
and we didn't run into her until after we were all out in the hall. So there was never any chance for her to have seen his body in the equipment room for herself. So no notice her slip with no her sense. French accent either, did they? <laughs> how did you know more than one person had been killed? And how did you know they were both guys? Because Kyoko had also disappeared, right? So she could have been dead too. <laughs> You all have such vivid imaginations, you know that? Imaginations? You claim that I was lying when I told you about the suspicious person I saw. Then what about- Did they have a camera? I took a picture. It's clearly staged. The costumed village dragging Hifumi away. It, it has to be some kind of setup, right? So let's put the suit on. And then, then she used the camera's timer to, to, Set up the picture. Have you so quickly forgotten? You are the only one who could have possibly fit into that suit. Plus, I happen to know that this particular camera does not have a timer. In other words, it is an unassailable fact that this is a picture of Hifumi being dragged away. Who if took the picture? Right. A lie, Celeste. Can this picture oh, exist? right. Simple. Are we sure that's really a picture of the suspect dragging- Holy shit, I called this when we first saw the picture. I said, you can't drag someone like that. Surely there are other explanations than the one- You, you can't know. hold someone like that. No. There is oh, they staged it. Sure did. I did- I did it. Other explanations? <laughs> if it wasn't a picture of the suspect dragging Hifumi away, the only other possibility is- Dancing. Oh. Dancing. It's not a picture of the suspect I was being genuine. Hifumi away. I would say it's a picture of Hifumi dragging the suspect away. That's certainly within the realm of possibility. The one being dragged off in that picture isn't Hifumi, but the person in the robot suit. We've simply been led to believe that it's the other way around. And the strange costume might only exist to lead us astray even farther. If you saw someone wearing something like that in this situation, of course you'd notice and be suspicious. That's what happened! You put me to sleep and made me out to be the bad guy in all this! <laughs> Such a thing is utterly impossible. He fooled oh, me dragging him away? Ridiculous, is it? I don't think it's was that six at all. being Robin? Then shut your mouth and allow no, that was just me. <laughs> the last thing she can prove, there's no way Hifumi was dragging away the suspect. But is that really possible? Okay, so you're gonna use Robo Justice costume. And you're gonna shoot stand up straight. <laughs> stand up straight. Okay. Across Ufumi and have him carry my weight. You tried to make me look like a bad guy. Like I said, ridiculous. As you can see in the picture, the suspect is standing perfectly upright. If the person inside the suit was unconscious, there's no way. Oh yeah, I can't get up, bend over. No. You fool! You fool! <laughs> you idiot! No, even if the person inside the suit were unconscious, <laughs> no, stand up period. Can't you just like, no, just next point had a certain characteristic that we already went over in this trial? <laughs> yes, I promise we're close. We have two other things, oh, Jesus, and then the final thing, <laughs> <laughs> and then some more stuff, yeah, oh, and then the another thing. The last thing is the most important, the like next thing that happens. Sick. You you totally can't bend at the waist. Seems like a pretty obvious oversight. That's right. They totally made a mistake when they made it, so it couldn't bend at the waist. I'm not so sure that was a mistake. I think the suit was designed from the beginning to be used the way it was. Oh, not looking so cool anymore. Specially designed and stuff here. Not looking so swag. That's how they were able to fake that whole thing. 
The point of it all was to make us believe whoever was in the suit was to blame. I suppose this is checkmate. <laughs> what do you mean, checkmate? Oh, <gasps> no, 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 already forgotten what Kifumi told us. Wait, a no, wait, you just admitted he wasn't dead. Hey, Fumi, who was it? Who attacked you? Who tried to kill you? Who killed me? That's right. I remember their name. I I Yasu. He Hero. But are we sure he was really pointing the finger at Hero? What the hell are you talking about? I'll burn you alive! Okay. Kyoko, what do you mean by that? Think back to how Hifumi used to talk to us. How did he refer to each of us? I got it! That's right! Our last names! He called us all by our last names! Exactly. I know I heard him say Mr. Nayagi more than once, for example. So if Hifumi did mean to say Hiro's name, he would have said his last name, Hagakure. I'm sure it was just incidental. By chance, he just... his first name. Decent? Don't talk. <laughs> Random chance. Now isn't that a convenient explanation? No. There's no reason to think he would have said the name any different than normal. But he must have run out of energy before he could say any more. So he Fumi was trying to tell us the last name of whoever killed him? But the name he said doesn't apply to anyone here. Well, no. Hold on. There's one person it could apply yes. to. Yes, could it really be? And that's Celeste. She never actually told us what her real name is. <sighs> what did you just say? To think. You take your false accusation so far, I don't know whether to laugh or spit! Come on! Enough with your idiotic blather! Yasuhiro is a loser's name! Do I look like a loser to you? Well, do I? What? I think I've earned the right to be a little on edge. Okay, then fill us in. What's your real name? Hi. Make sure your ear holes are wide open and listen up! My real name is Celestia Ludenberg. Could you please stop making me repeat myself over and over again? Celestia, don't she knows give we're up. bad at the so, game. <laughs> and I have to do something to Get, make she got her. Us. So, you are going to. Is it the handbook? Yes. Um. You're gonna shoot no way to contradict me. Sick. How the fuck did Kyoko know that? He wanted us to yeah, right. Last name, Yasuhiro. Oh, because she thought about what Hifumi said. But she wasn't there. It would have I have questions. You, Celeste. you haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to tell you? Why is it upside down? <laughs> He's angry. I love when Master yells at people. What? Why did that? Wait, Probably because of the purple things in front of it. God damn it. Ugh. That's so annoying. No! It's, it's the last thing before... Um, 
we do the final thing, so they're probably like, let's make it. Yeah, I am. If there's one person here who might have, might have that last name. <laughs> it would have to be you, Celeste. You haven't told anyone what your real name is. How many times do I have to Jeff. tell you? My name is... Celeste, you loaded for God damn it! How long do you plan to go on pretending? I'm not pretending. It's the truth. And since you have no way to... There we go. No, that's wrong. Ooh. 